What's up, my wonderful weirdos? We good? We chillin'? We fancy a bit of G2? A little bit of gnarly 90s naffness is a totally tubular treat? All right, go on then. But only if you promise not to have a cow. So yes, Transformers Generation 2 has been enjoying a spot of mild limelight recently. What with Legacy Laser Prime and a handsome handful of Gen Select repaints, which is great, obviously. This channel loves G2. But I gotta say, I don't like how y'all talk about it. It wasn't all neon sugar rush recolors, you know? It's like all anybody wants to talk about is constipated sideswipe with a dayglow nerf cannon or luminous yellow bruticus in opposite camouflage that actively increases his visibility. <laughs> Let's all make that joke. I feel like G2 only ever gets brought up if there's already a pre-existing hot seller G1 figure to dunk in some Nickelodeon gunk. Why's it always gotta come back to G1 but wacky? Why do we not celebrate the creativity that was kicking off in those years? Where are the actual Gen 2 characters with their bonkers names and horrible scrunched faces? Where are the gimmicks, man? Where's the water guns and the barely integrated funfair tat and the mangled voice chips and the heat sensitive color changing that only worked for 10 days in 1994? This is tackiness erasure. Why do the things we value in toys today, detail, articulation, screen accuracy, why does that preclude the notion of fun focused action features? Isn't one of our main mantras dare to be stupid? So today, in an internet first, I'd like to take a minute to show you some silly little toys. Yes, indeed. Fresh from the naff box, these four dudes are the Transformers Generation 2 Auto Rollers. Or are they? We'll get into that. But basically, yes. Now this family of four nominally Gen 2 numpties are pretty much an infinitely endearing automorph experiment based around a single motion activated transformation mechanic that I like to call the difficult 90s push former doot de doo with each of them fully committing to the bit and working it into their own unique alt mode and signature style at the cost of almost all functionality. And that's G2. Look, we got a play feature to push. Who needs a waist swivel? Who needs a leg? So let's firstly huck some hype at the main mainstream green team of Roadblock and Dirtbag. Now these burly builder bros are giving mad soft reboot Constructicon vibes, blasting brutalist beef box beauty like the baddest bros in the borough. And like, do you know what I mean? They're clearly cut from the same colossal cloth, with a similar core robo form stacked atop their entire alt mode ass end, some truly all-timer, almighty light piping, and a sort of unified vibe that still allows room for ample individuality. We got Roadblock rocking this fierce front loader look with this huge diggy scoop body bulge and mega motor shoulders while dirtbags looking perhaps slightly sloppier with an oddly unsubstantial hood chest, baggy flatbed shoulders and clumsy kibble. But they're definitely a towering tough guy tag team and believe me when I say they are brimming with gimmicks. They are brimmicks. Like they're packing some ferocious finger bang firepower with these oversized barbed rockets. Dirt Reynolds has got this weird back and forth slap clap Clamp me do, while Block Hudson's bringing the buzz with built in circular saw stylissimo. I seriously high key love that they've got no normal hands between them. They've traded out every possible digit for silly Robot Wars bullshit. Bit like my bank account. <laughs> And that's it. They're literally just big, heavy, dense dickheads who know what they're about and they're very slowly gonna get you. So as loud and proud gimmick-led one-step automorphers, these thuggeroos are all about the push-along self-conversion. You pretty much just tidy them up a bit and let the mechanism do the work. Or at least you used to until Roadblock decided to give up the ghost 10 minutes before I started filming. Ooh, I know! I'll remain in perfect working order for nearly three decades and then unexpectedly pack up right when few needs me. Yeah, thanks mate. Regardless though, the alt modes are some cracking construction crew creeps, flaunting their full bodied forms for all they're worth, with satisfyingly sharp angles, matching amber cabins and honking tonka chonk. Baggy Thatcher's even got a little T-form hood emblem that you're definitely supposed to misread as tonka. And like, lads, how are you gonna one step so convincingly? How are these vehicles so perfect? They don't even look like they might be robots, except for a tiny toe peek deep in the undercarriage if you're gonna be a wiener about it. So yes, Roadblock's bot mode bottom load mono stomp pops so hot as a robot badonkadonk. Love the little bonus funnel and his and hers hazard stripes. Gotta say, Big Block Rogers here was definitely first in the queue for vehicle gimmicks with this neat twin hinge tip and flip scoop-de-whoop while Dirty B's got 
Nothing, actually. You want a dump truck to be able to tip its bed, right? But nah, stoic as shit. I mean, you can put stuff on it, but you can put stuff on anything. That's not a gimmick, is it? Being under stuff. But like, what gets me is that both boys do have weapon storage for the freaky spiky echidna dick missiles, but even that doesn't utilize the bed. They like tab onto the front lip instead and hang weirdly over it. I mean, at least this automorph works. But look, they didn't come here to make sense, all right? They're here to speak and rhyme the entire time and listen to Iron Maiden Baby. They work as the thing they are. They do the thing they do. That's their style, that's what's up, and that is G2. Anyway, this pair were the only two auto rollers that actually made it out before the entire G2 toy line was shit canned. Presumably for being so flawless and so overwhelmingly successful that they had to stop to make it fair on the rest of the toy market. Let's go with that. Leaving the second wave of auto roller designs to languish in a drawer for a full three years until they finally dropped in Beast Wars 2, or rather Beast Wars Second, or Bleh, which found itself becoming home to a glut of decidedly machiney mecha folks repurposed as the world's least Predacon-y Predacons. Like, I kind of thought the Predacons whole deal was that they were animals. The awesome animals, like the cold-blooded, the invertebrates, the reptiles, the dinosaurs, and apparently that extends to just robots too? All right, I mean, whatever. Do your thing, boys. You get that angry moist energy. So won't somebody say sup to the awkwardly monikered auto launcher and auto jetter barging into the beast era with their own variations on the vibe as an obese APC and a janky jet jerk. Now as toys, as objects, these are very much just the same base mechanism dressed up in different vehicle theming with precisely one additional play feature and a whole heap in hundred weight of unique innate charisma. Like I am deliriously defenseless against the colossal charm levels on Jet the Hitman heart here. Like, yes, it's clumsy. Yes, it has a mono leg and triple launches instead of hands and most of its alt mode chilling against its back. But that's kind of why it's good. Have we learned nothing? There's just so much legit Transformer energy here. The superb star screamy chest, the mean techno shoulders, the intense Energon light piping and that dope ass flight helmet head design. There's brilliance among the boxiness. It's like the perfect blend of slick cyber sky assassin and barely mobile 70s housework droid. And with one easy diagonal collapse, title of my memoir, Jetta Garbo glides into a surprisingly clean jet mode for a gimmicky goon. Just gorgeous form, immaculate silhouette, sick real world military colors and that bright green canopy like a bonus globule of 90s. Oh, landing gear. Yeah. Oh, rub sign. Ah, tickle that pred head. Might be a little undercarriagey, perhaps, but we can deal. And it maybe looks a bit much with six missiles all up in your eyeline. But hey, man, have you heard of G2? Six is conservative. 14 missiles! And like, I don't know if it's just because these Second War Wazics are newer, but the mechanisms feel way more robust. The switches feel stronger. The action's easier. They're just effective and efficient and pleasing. I feel respected. I feel safe as an audience. Member. But gang, you cannot be ready for the cubist calamity that is Auto Launcher. God, just the pinnacle of fat ass fabulosity. I don't think I've ever seen a robot mode that gave fewer. F he is all tit. Like, he's practically as long as he is tall. Doesn't he kind of look diagonally slashed, like he lost a sword fight in an anime? But beyond the immediate visual hilarity, it's actually a pretty decent robot. Like, it's got some rad late wave legitimacy and fully formed transformery features with an extremely headmastery head, token decorative trousers, and like actual hands. Steady on. He's also the only auto roller that comes with an actual gun, so naturally I ain't got it. Sorry. Got him loose, it wasn't in there. What are you gonna do? He can hold one of these like a club. There, animated snarl vibes. But like, who needs a weapon? He is a weapon. Like this whole front chunk here is actually a top loading pizza cannon, which we'll get to. Plus he's got articulated head howitzers and like shoulder shooties. He's good, he's covered. Shout out once again to the light piping, which is top down only, but still manages to be stunning. Don't know if I love this big obstructy head hood, but it does give him like a star saber vibe, right? And I gotta note this little antenna here, which gets just about enough clearance from the huge bod slab. I love that something this lumpy still manages to be subtle somehow. But I remain convinced that this is the ultimate example of auto roller technology because damn can it roll and goddamn can it auto. Those wheels are smooth as a salamander and you will not stop it transforming. Oh gosh. Like even when you lock it into neutral, it still kind of wants to go. He cannot be controlled. And this APC mode is such a sumptuous 
Subway sandwich is stupid. Thumping on up like the dumpiest clump of lump and chump. I'm just utterly enamored by how graceless it is. Like, Autojetta was so sleek. It makes Dirtbag and Roadblock look so clean. Auto Launcher is just unhinged brute force thickitude. With this strange nonplussed pareidolia frog face, like a friggin' theoretical trans tech spit -or. And of course, the only visible kibble on the team. He's the only one on the team to actually have hands, and he's too stoked about it to even hide him. Love the baby radar array and this uncharacteristically sensible weapon storage. Like, we ain't settling for tenuous clip-on nubs or a cheeky underside stash here. This king is packing a whole ass car boot that fully opens and closes to accommodate that handheld launcher that I ain't got. So I guess we could just fill it up with, like, Ikea carrier bags and antifreeze. Anyway, you'll want to check out a second excellent push power gimmick. So you simply flick the switch to activate the front axle, give it a careful cruise across the counter, and watch in horror as it starts projectile barfing LPs. That's it's so wild, man. It's so joyfully unorthodox and mechanically bombastic. Every step of the process feels cool. You get to flick open this spring-loaded hatch that has another hatch on it and a rub sign on the inside, then stack the discs back up in there and let it thwack itself closed. Man, what a weird selling point. Oh yeah, you should totally get a Beast Wars second auto launcher. It's really fun to reload. What? I don't know, man. Otto von Bismarck here has just become one of my favorite things in the world. Just this obscure, oddly formed, all charm, all chonk, all action dunce box. The dumbest of a dumb bunch. Same. And that's all of them. That's where the auto rollers ended. They never really showed up again and only left the most pathetic legacy. Pathegacy. Like they were gonna do an Optimus Prime and a Hound version, but it didn't look like them and it never really happened. Roadblocks had a couple of pastiches here and there. And I'd like to think that Autojetta had some vague movieverse influence on like Breakaway or the 07 Seeker Toys triple finger missile situation. But I feel like the auto roller idea kind of goes beyond specific character homages and that, because they easily could have made a whole dedicated toy line of auto rollers. It's a neat enough and kid-friendly enough idea that you could easily expand it, right? Do some sports cars, throw in some dinosaurs, but nah, just the four. And I mean, it's not like one-step changes are a new thing or a weird thing. They've always been around, and they show up all the time in like the more kid-targeted end of the mainstream lines. God, isn't it crazy to think there was a time when all Transformers were kid-targeted? But what I mean is they could have built a whole empire out of push forming, but they didn't. Somebody almost certainly has, can't be bothered to check, but they didn't. So for me, the auto rollers are everything that's good and pure about G2. Because honestly, there is a lot about G2 that does turn me off or weird me out. So much of it is just normal ass robots with big silly guns. They literally repacked iconic generation defining toys like Jazz and Optimus Prime with sillier paint jobs and neon spring loaded idiot blasters. Not so much robots with gimmicks as robots alongside gimmicks. But the auto rollers are the opposite of that. Their gimmick defines them. It gives them form and function and a trademark distinctive appeal rather than weighing them down or cheapening something that was already popular. It's their baseline. They're built around it. This is why Transformers Generation 2 was good actually. There was room for something to just be something. And not everything had to be everything or do everything. No, they can't do many poses. We've got laser rods for that. No, you didn't see Dirtbag on TV, but Optimus Prime is available. See what I mean? I think what I'm trying to say is that in today's climate where the Transformers image is so established and slick and managed and rehearsed, it can be easy to look back at some of the freaky stupid shit from the in-between era and be like, what were they thinking? Hey man, at least they were thinking. This is why you need an experimental phase. You might not nail every shot or please all the people all the time, but the act of accepting the possibility of failure allows you to embrace an idea and max out its potential. The auto rollers are icons of self-fulfillment. They roll their own way. They literally auto roll. They sort themselves out. They barely need you. This is what they are. They can't not be this. They can't not do this. They are this. And isn't that some pretty great energy to aspire to? Like I'm I might not be perfect, I might be clumsy and inflexible, but I know what I'm for, and I'm great at what I do. So auto-roll, baby! Do your ideas. Do something. Do it! You never know when you're gonna get shit canned. So do it. Do it for you. Take a risk. Post your cringe. Why not? There are far worse ways to live than auto-rolling. So until next time, my name's Theo, and get me! I just did a whole video about G2 without saying the word Dudicus. Oh, fuck. <laughs>
How was that? Weird? Weird enough? I could have gone weirder. Some of the shit I cut out of this episode. Oh my god. Anyway, big love to Andrew from Australia for hooking me up with a roadblock and dirt bag. And huge love to this episode's special patron, David Napper. Thank you, mate. Big love, TFUKCon. Come at me, Brom. Be sure to subscribe for more Thew's awesome Transformers reviews. Robocentric vocabugasm.